High in the Argentinian Andes, amidst the icy peaks, archaeologists find a site that leads to a ghastly discovery. When most people picture the Andes, they think of Peru or Machu Picchu. But there are also the snow-covered mountains of Argentina. They tower over the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on the planet. This mountain is over 20,000 feet in elevation. And it's home to the highest archaeological site in the world. Archaeologists braved several days of driving winds and freezing temperatures to reach the summit of Yoyoyako before they could begin excavations of three burials lying under five feet of rock and earth. One of the burial platforms had been placed in a naturally formed hole in bedrock so narrow that the archaeologists were forced to lower a man by hand into the pit to retrieve its contents, the body of a young girl. It's a disturbing sight. It appears as if these bodies are all children, three of them, which had been mummified by the cold. Why are these children buried so high up on a mountain? What on earth could they possibly be doing up here? It's an unsettling discovery, even for this group of seasoned archaeologists and they're compelled to find out what happened to them. The tombs date back to the Inca Empire. The Incas were a sophisticated and powerful civilization that ruled over a large portion of South America from 1438 to 1533 AD. we know of Inca traditions, people were buried where they lived, not on top of a mountain. This isn't a settlement, and there's no larger burial site up here. It's just these three bodies. Due to the extremely cold, arid environment, their bodies froze before they dehydrated, so the organs never shriveled and desiccation never occurred. This resulted in making them the most well-preserved mummies ever found. Scientists begin analyzing the bodies and quickly determine their ages. The smaller children, a boy and a girl, are both around four or five. The older girl is around 13, and they discover that she was likely suffering from tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is highly contagious and deadly. Putting infected people high on a mountain would be an effective method of preventing the spread of disease. Maybe this was their way of stopping an epidemic. But when scientists examine the remains of the two other children, they show no signs of the disease. Maybe the other two were siblings of the sixth child and quarantined as a precaution. But it just doesn't make sense. There had to be other places to isolate sick people that weren't so hard to reach. This was a sophisticated civilization. Archaeologists analyze their clothing and conclude that these children were members of a high social class. When the Spanish invaded in 1532, they were known to capture important members of the Inca nobility and hold them ransom as a means to exert influence over the entire society. Could these children have been taken hostage? The young boy was found tied up, which could be evidence of a kidnapping. And the high elevation would have allowed them to spot any rescue force coming from a distance. Maybe these were hostages who were eliminated when nobles didn't cooperate or when they weren't needed anymore. But why would they go to all this trouble to bury disposable hostages on the top of the mountain? And that's not the biggest problem with this theory.
scientists perform radiocarbon testing on the mummies to determine their age. Examinations of the remains suggest that the bodies are, at the very least, 500 years old. The Spanish didn't arrive in the area until 1532. These mummies were buried decades before that. So these children probably weren't political hostages. More research into the bodies offers yet another surprising discovery. Tests show that each of the children had high levels of alcohol and coca in their system at the time of death. In fact, the older girl had a chunk of it lodged in between her teeth and her cheek. These intoxicants were used by Inca of all ages. The alcohol was a corn-based spirit known as chicha, and coca leaves were known to alleviate altitude sickness. Could the alcohol and coca provide a clue to what led these children to die high up in the mountains? Do these intoxicants give us any clues into the cause of the children's death? By modern Western standards, it sounds disturbing, but the Incas viewed these things very differently. To be drunk or in a state of intoxication was considered to be a spiritual or holy experience for the Incas. Coca was an integral part of their society. And it still remains an important part of Andean culture, even today. Inca silver miners chewed coca leaf to help overcome pain, fatigue, and respiratory problems. But why give coca and alcohol to children? Researchers turn back to the bodies looking for answers. They analyze the older girl's hair with the understanding that hair grows one centimeter per month. The girl's hair was braided so tight that it retained environmental evidence that gives us a timeline of the girl's health. They deduce that her diet had changed dramatically about 12 months before her death. Studies of the hair show that her diet changed from mostly potatoes to a much richer diet of meat and maize. It would have been one of the most luxurious diets you could imagine at that time. All the signs point to these children being selected and groomed for some very special purpose. Could they have been selected for ritual sacrifice to the gods? The Incas participated in human sacrifices. Child sacrifice was called capacocha. It was a great honor to be sacrificed in this manner. The Inca chose children from the far corners of their lands to underscore the unity of their empire. In fact, there was a caste of Inca groomed especially for this great honor. They were called the Akya, and the older girl fits the description. An Akya was a young girl schooled in the art of weaving and chicha making. When Akyas reached puberty, they were either married off to a dignitary or offered up as a sacrifice to the gods. If she was chosen for sacrifice, she would be led through a series of rituals involving large quantities of alcohol and coca during a months long journey from the Inca capital of Cusco to her final resting place. Researchers still don't know how she died but typical methods of ritual killing were strangulation, live burial, and blows to the head. As barbaric as it sounds, we need to understand this in the context of Inca belief and tradition. This was one of the greatest honors bestowed on anyone, whether child or adult. Their sacrifice literally was to ensure the survival of their entire people. While the oldest girl seems to fit into the story of this tradition, the younger two children do not. Until more conclusive evidence comes to light, 
experts continued to explore theories as to why they were also part of this sacrifice to the gods. 